Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collector podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons! Terrorize! Hi, welcome to TFYLP. We have a special episode tonight. Uh, we're doing an interview. This is uh, uh, for our holiday show here. Um, so with me tonight, uh, I have Rick and Peter. And then we have our uh, special guest. Uh, we have Chris, um, who um, once upon a time uh, starred in some uh, Transformers commercials back in the day. So we'll kind of get get into that, um, you know, kind of how everything worked and, um, <clears throat> and yeah, so anyway. So, um, Chris, let's, let's start off with basics. Uh, who are you? How old were you? How did you, what is the tale of you coming to be the kid in those infamous Transformers commercials? Okay. So, so, um, if I'm remembering correctly, <laughs> I think my mom picked me up from, um, I was at, uh, work with my dad. I mean, I wasn't working, but, um, um, she picked me up and she said, Hey, what do you think about possibly being in a commercial? You know, and I was, you know, just like any kid, what are you talking about? And, uh, she was telling, she told me that, um, I guess you know, Hasbro was doing, um, auditions for commercials. And, you know, I told her, of course, of course I told her, yeah, sure. But, you know, I didn't really think anything would come of it. Um, now, how old were you, and, and where was this? So I was 10 years old, and we were living in the, ne the Netherlands at the time. My dad was in the Air Force, and we were stationed at a, um, a place called Absent. It was kind of like a, um, a combined or joint base. There were um, Canadians, Brits, Americans there. So, um, And it was through the youth organization. It was called the IYA, Interna International Youth Association. And they kind of hosted the um, Hasbro and the, uh, the auditions. So all these commercials with all these kids that we assumed because we're Americans, we assume other people are Americans. We assume these kids were Amer well. You seem to be American. Yeah, I'm, they, I'm totally American. <laughs> they were shot overseas. Um, these particular ones were. Um, you know, I don't know about the ones before or after. Um, from what I was told at the time it was cheaper for Hasbro to do that. Like they didn't have to get you like in like the, the actors guilds or whatever. Um, so I haven't really done my research, but from my understanding is like they have to pay you for every take and every time it's shown on TV, if they film here, but by filming over there, they, they were, it was like a loophole around all that. That's my understanding. Right. So no child safety laws. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. That's what we like to hear. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> right. It was the eighties. Yeah. All right, so your mom picks you up from school. She says, you want to be in a commercial. What happened next? So um, I don't know how long, how much time passed between that and the actual auditions there locally. But we went, you know, and it was just kind of like one of those things where pretty much every kid showed up. And they're like, yeah, you're going on to the next step. So the next step, we lived about three hours south of Amsterdam in that little piece of the Netherlands that's between um, Belgium and Germany. So um, the next step was to go up to Amsterdam to audition um, and we went up there and there was, um, I think four of us and they did it in groups of two. And so we did our audition. Well, well there were more than four of us, but they picked four of us. Now, were these all, uh, American or English speaking kids? Um, yeah, I think all of us were Americans. Um, and so they got down to four of us and they did us in, then they took us in groups of two um back there and uh when it was done they called me and this other kid back and they said um hey you guys made it and so i you know i actually i, I remember feeling bad for the other two guys because they didn't call back but they also made it i don't know why they did it in two separate groups like that but so the four of us did the uh got in i didn't know any of them um before that and i don't i don't know any of them now um and um 
then from there, you know, we, uh, we, we did filming. I don't remember how that took place. You know, I think that was all between them and, you know, the parents and stuff. So have you talked to your, did you ever talk to your folks about it? Like when growing up, like, Hey, how did this, how much did I get paid for this? Where, where is that money? So I think, um, it was like 500 guilders a day. That's what I was told. I did, none of that came directly is, to me. Is that like Bitcoin? Which, I think at that time it was like $250. And so we yeah. filmed three different days. Um, I know we filmed at least three different commercials. One day we filmed with two, um, um, some of the same transformers, but I know some of the stuff that we did was not in the commercial that I've seen. So I don't know if there's another commercial floating out there for those same transformers or if those just didn't make the cut. But so uh, let's talk about what you remember from set. Did you wear your own clothes? Did they dress you? They, I'm pretty sure we had a dressing room. I, I'm I'm kind of remembering that. That's that is vague, but I'm pretty sure they gave us clothes to wear. And did you get there. to? play with the toys beforehand get to know the toys or did they just say hey here's here's what the toy does do this well the first commercial was for the first day we shot was for um uh trading cards trading cards that i can't find anywhere on the internet they can't find them for sale anywhere i've never seen that commercial i've tried youtubing it googling it I can't find that anywhere, but it was for like trading cards. And, and the set was like set up like we we're in a park, had like fake sidewalks and fake grass and stuff like that. And we were like trading cards. Um, so, no, not really. We just, you know, and everything was just ad libbed. And there's actually a funny story that goes along with that. Can we hear it? Yeah, what's, sure. What's the funny story? Um, so, this, so, um, they pulled me off the set and told me that I couldn't say Optimus Prime co correctly. <clears throat> so they basically took me to like a speech therapist there on the set and taught me how to say Optimus Prime. And like I said, everything was ad libbed. Um, I don't recall anything being scripted at all. And then, um, so I've never, like I said, I've never seen that commercial, but the other two, they dubbed over our voices anyways. So it was, yeah, it was kind of like, why did we even go through all that? It, everything was ad lib, and you can even use our voices. So what was the point? And it makes me wonder: is that why they dubbed our, over our voices? Was I the was I the reason for that? Well, um, that's very interesting. I who would have thought that that would have been dubbed over? I wonder if it was kids doing the voiceover or really good actors who does who do the voice of kids. Yeah. I, I don't know, but it's also interesting to know that they would have a speech therapist on set. So, uh, day two, we, by the way, if anyone Wait, knows of these trading cards. Before we go to day two, I'm curious, did those Transformers cards exist? Like, Peter Rick, I'm sure you would know if they did. Who, there was who some, knows? I mean, yeah. there's so many different card sets out there. And uh, lots of uh, interesting stuff internationally. So yeah. I think okay. we mm -hmm. might know. Yeah. yeah. Or, or, you know, what I've wondered is, do they, do they have ideas and prototypes for things that just never get released? You know, they, um, there are stuff like that, but for it to make it to a commercial, it's pretty weird that it wouldn't have gotten released. Uh, yeah. I can see the commercial being filmed and never aired, but the, but by that point, the product's already in the pipeline because you got to have samples to shoot with. Mm -hmm. So uh, if anybody out there knows about these cards, maybe some of our international listeners. Uh, it's possible it was a regional thing. It's possible it's just the Transformers uh, trading cards. Uh, you know yeah. what? I'll send you some pictures, and maybe that'll jog your memory. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be interesting to find them. Um, and so, so that one was a kind of a two-parter. So we did the part where I said there was like a fake little park set up, and then they uh, transported us over to another set. And in that set, it was basically like we were in a toy store, from what I recall. And like the back wall was pretty much every Transformer you could think of still in the boxes, just kind of stacked on top of each other. And they would not let us have any of them. Wouldn't, you know, the parents kept asking. So they, but um, 
on the second and third commercials, they actually gave us some toys, which is pretty cool. And Did you get to keep probably, the toys from the commercial? No, we didn't. I think those were all just prototypes. Um, I mean, from my recollection, they seemed very, you know, functional and real. But, yeah, they wouldn't let us keep them. All right. And, and so that out in circulation, I would think, before the toy was actually released. Even even just, you know, those two or three. So there's some animation that goes with those commercials. I'm guessing they didn't show that to you guys. No. Okay. And so so back to my other question. Did you have any time to play or get to know the toys before oh, they said, hey, you're going to do this? No. Not that if we did, it was uh, it was such little time that I don't recall it. Uh, did everyone did you and the other kids get along? Were you? Um, yeah, I think so. I think like in between like shots and shooting, there was like areas in the back where we could just go hang out and play. Yeah. And, were they like they put like newspaper down for you guys and, and some water? <laughs> there was just a room that I know this is going to sound I just recall a room with a bed, and we would just hang out in there. Uh, <laughs> and they would flash the red light when they wanted you on set. And uh, I think they sent somebody to come in and get us. Yeah. And while we were doing that running around, I don't know if you guys remember this. Not to get like off the topic of Transformers, but do you remember that? Remember the Inhumanoids? Mm-hmm. Yes. I think those were really new back then, and we got to see like. They had some of those there, so I don't know if they were shooting commercials for that too. But we got to see those before they were actually released as toys. At least I don't, I don't think they had been released yet. So that was pretty neat too. Based on the time frame of when, because uh, we haven't actually mentioned the toys that you were in commercials for, like which characters. Mm-hmm. We've only mentioned the cards so far. But based on the timeline of what commercials you were in and when the and humanoid toys actually dropped, that would line up perfectly. So mm-hmm. they might not have, yeah, you might have seen them before they hit the street. That's awesome. So we're, if you're watching the the visual version of this, uh, we've edited it in the commercials. The commercials is the uh, Battle Chargers. And then it's uh, Springer and Rekar is the second commercial. Yeah. Look! It's Ultimate Lewis and the Autobots! Battle Chargers attack! Nobody jumps into action! Better than Battle Chargers! My Battle Chargers will crush the Autobots! Nobody jumps into action! Better than Battle Chargers! My Battle Chargers will crush the Autobots! The Transformers! Each sold separately from Hasbro. His spaceship destroyed by Decepticon Fire. Springer, the toughest of the Autobot Triple Changers, crash lands on planet Junkion. Hurry, hurry! Operators are standing by! No welcome way to hit a stranger! The Transformers for the race Junkion Rekka transforms from motorcycle to robot. And Triple Changer Springer transforms from car to helicopter to robot. The Transformers The Transformers, each sold separately from Hasbro. Now you're, I mean, if even Lucas can help me, um, Chris, you're not the kid that turns into Ultra Magnus, are you? No. Okay. So I, you're, you're you're the kid that's like looking around with the eyes. Yeah, that's me with the bowl cut and the kind of reddish brown hair. Yeah, that that's me. Um, um, no, I did film that that whole robots in disguise thing, and I had trouble keeping my eyes focused in one spot. So I don't think it, that kid. That kid's a lucky kid, because I can tell you, he didn't film all the commercials that he's shown up in. He, he's in a lot more commercials than he actually filmed. I've seen a bunch of them like on YouTube and stuff. Is it is it weird now, knowing that those commercials are out on DVD sets and on YouTube, and you can go to the store and buy a DVD set and have that commercial on there? It, yeah, it is kind of weird when you think about it like that. What do your kids think of this? Are they, are they of age to know like what's going on? Like, dad used to be so someone I, important. I have six kids. Um, one of them is an adult. Uh, one's a teenager, so those are old enough. My younger kids are my my oldest um, kids with my current wife. Probably just getting to that age where they might be able to understand it. But the concept of commercials is kind of you know lost on them. And maybe not. Yeah, I guess YouTube has them now, and they're just getting into watching that. So. 
Um, I think I think my two older kids think it's pretty cool. So as a parent, with your kids growing up, did you buy them Transformers? Oh yeah. Was that on to... purpose because of the commercial and the history, or is it just like, hey, Transformers were cool? I think the commercials kind of are what like kind of kind of got me into Transformers. Before that, I was you know I just recently gotten into GI Joe, but of course, sorry, my um um. You know, before that, I was playing with Star Wars mostly, He-Man a little bit. Um, it just like I said, just recently gotten into GI Joe, and I think that those commercials were, were what launched me into Transformers. I think I probably would have started playing with them anyways. I mean, just cool toys, but um, they're probably of all those, you know, toy lines I mentioned, probably my favorites. So, did you ever get a chance to go to the store and buy those? those toys that you were in the commercials with so i did get and i don't i don't know where it is now i think my ex-wife has it in storage um but i do have the um the battle charger i have i have one here but it's not uh, mine it's bought used from a toy convention um um so i do have um run amok was his name somewhere and, and then, like I said, the used one. Um, I have a couple of Springers here, and I have a Retgar here. And I just, um, the other day, I pre-ordered a Retgar off of um, Hasbro Pulse. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, nice. that new one's pretty good. So would you have thought at the time you did those commercials that you would be able to watch that today? You know, that you'd be able to see it on YouTube and whatnot? No, of course not. I don't, you know, I don't think, I don't know that I've ever even thought I'd see him living in the ne- the Netherlands at the time. Um, it, most of the commercials you saw were Dutch. Um, right. If I recall correctly, a lot of American TV, but you know, the, the commercials in between were Dutch. Um, the first time I saw him, we were friends. Um, my mom worked with this Lieutenant Colonel who had come back to the United States and he filmed some Saturday morning cartoons and sent them back to me and and I was watching them and the commercial came on. I ran downstairs yelling at my mom. I was yelling at my <laughs> and she got kinda got aggravated with me because she thought something was wrong because of the way I was like yelling for her. Yeah, you know, I was so excited to see it. Um, and I'm pretty sure it was the Battle Chargers commercial. So how long did it go between because there we're part of that generation that we grew up without YouTube. We had mm-hmm. VHS tapes. Yep. So how long was it between the last time you saw that commercial as a kid and then rediscovering it later on in life? Oh, probably years, if not a couple of decades. Did you did you go out looking for it or did someone say, hey, is that you or. That I don't remember, actually, Um, I probably would have looked for it. Um, Um. I probably looked for it because I had them at one point. I had links posted on my um, my old Facebook account, so it's possible. But I, I honestly, I don't remember. I do. I mean, I do have friends, even you know, who I didn't know at the time, who know that I filmed those commercials. So it's possible they found them or came across them and told me or something like. But so, did you end up being in other commercials as well, or is it just the the Transformers commercials that you were in? Uh, just Transformers, and like I said, we filmed three separate days. Um, there's some there's some filming that I know that we did, um, that I recall doing that w- is not in it. That's from the um, the Redgar Springer commercial. When you see that commercial, I'm pretty sure I'm only using Redgar in that commercial. But there were there were parts of that commercial where I filmed Springer. There was there was a part where they where there was a um, b- big cylindrical piece of styrofoam about this big around it was about it's kind of hard to show you it was probably about three feet tall and they, they had it on i guess some kind of a rod or something and it was just spinning and it was spray spray painted like a dark purple um the same is probably what's in the commercial and it was just spinning and i just had to stand there with with springer in my hand like this and make so the spinning made it look like he was flying and that's not in the commercial hmm so what how was the uh end of the filming process they said all right you guys are done uh 
Uh, Aktun, wie geht's? Das war dann ja. I don't, I don't, I don't recall that. I don't know if we were ever actually told, hey, yeah, this is it. You guys are finished. It's wrap. I'm sure we probably were. I don't recall that. Um, I, I doubt that they just kind of left us hanging, waiting for that next call that just never came. But I don't, I don't recall. I really just mostly remember the filming process. Did you, uh, do you remember what toys they gave you at the end? Oh yeah. So on the second commercial, I think, I think they gave us Dinobots and I got slag. I think I got the one that's the, um, the, the stegosaurus. Snarl. Okay. Oh, yep. You're right. Um, and then for the third one, they gave us, um, the new seekers and I got thrust. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I own that thrust. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's, that's, uh, yeah, that thrust is directly from Hasbro. Um, um, All right. Peter, you should check the uh, copyrights on that. We'll do. Mm-hmm. He's backed up right now, but yeah. Yeah. So, like, like, um, that, I remember mostly the second commercial. That's the one I remember most vividly. That's the one with the battle chargers. So um, do you remember any directions they gave you? Like, uh, all right, so you're going to pull this thing back, let it go, smile. Yeah, that's and that's why I kind of remember that one the most. That one was they're very fun. So they were all very fun. And you can imagine being a 10-year-old kid r- recording commercials for, you know, national television um, for – a, a top line toy like transformers um totally like surreal but um so it was really exciting to do but that one was also a pain in the butt to do because we were on a set and we had these big heat lamps that were about this big around about that high above our heads just outside of the camera's view and i had like a, a polo with a sweatshirt on so i'm i'm in here i'm baking i'm on i'm on my hands and knees with these heat lamps this high above my head um and the director is telling us what they want us to do is they want us to pull these battle chargers back in unison completely at the same time, let go without pushing forward at all, make sure that they stayed straight with each other, popped up at the same time and didn't crisscross at all. And that, that was pretty tough to do. That one took um, close to or just over 30 takes to, to get that right. I think if you watch it, you still see I'm pretty sure they crisscross. And I know they did not, you know, we got specific direction for that to not happen. Did so. uh, did all the kids do the same takes or did they pick certain kids? Hey, you do this one. You, both of you do this one and we'll pick the better one. Or It was the same. We had the same roles throughout all the takes. It was I had um, um, the white one run amok the whole time. The, the guy who had the black one, um, which I think is run about, I think is his name. He had that guy the whole time. And the guys that came swooping in with the the Autobots, they had the. Those those same Autobots the whole time. I think we should find those guys and recreate that commercial. <laughs> that of all awesome. you guys now. Probably be willing. There, there you go. Do do it over uh, over Skype or Zoom and whatnot. That'd be fun. And it'd be interesting to see, you know, um, how similar or how different our, our recollection of the process is or our was. So, uh, what does your what does your wife think about you uh, doing this interview today? Um, she's probably um, happy that it's keeping me away from her, <laughs> so she can watch her her shows on her phone. No, I think she thinks it's cool. She helped me get everything set up and ready. Um, um, you know, we're setting up this that I'm in, decorating it for Christmas and stuff. We're still in the process and. I'm I'm still in the you know we just moved into this house a couple months ago I I've got like a setup behind here I don't I don't know if you guys can see it or if I'm in the way but I'm still in the process you can see a couple of empty shelves uh, of trying to get that one done most of it's Transformers but some of it's some other stuff so you're still a Transformers fan oh yeah okay I, so I would say recently I be, I kind of became a collector and that started out going back to your question about whether or not I still buy, if I buy toys for my kids, it kind of started off with me buying transformers that were probably a little advanced for my kids at the time that I bought them. So just kept them in packaging, just stored in our closets. (laughs) 
and and so now they're mine. Yeah. I did the same for my kids, and yeah. now they're too valuable for me to give them to my kids. So <laughs> now they're mine. <laughs> so I have a um, I have a uh, Grimlock is one of my favorite Autobots. So I have a whole Grimlock set up over over here. My kids will come in and be like, "Hey, wait, that's mine." I'm like, "Fine." Now. <laughs> They just lose it's, them and break. Them it's in my house, so it's mine. Yeah. Right. Um, you, so you got to get you... those glass shelves, you know, with the, with the locks on it, right? Yeah. Were, yeah. were you at all disappointed that uh, you didn't get a call from Michael Bay or the studio to reprise your role <laughs> for the for the film? You know, that would have been awesome, but I mean, I I didn't really even think about it. Yeah. Those, those, those were pretty good movies. I liked them a lot. I'm I'm interested to see what the the new one will, will end up being like. So, uh, I mean, we're figuring out you were ten years old. We're close to the same age. You got to be in your forties. Yeah, forty-seven. Uh, uh, do you know of Beast Wars? Do I know of Beast Wars? Yeah, is that is that past your time? Oh no, I I still watch. <laughs> My kids and I watch Rescue Bots together. Okay. All right. If it's if okay. it's Transformers, we watch it. Nice. All right. Well, good for you. Uh, do you still like keep up with anything else, GI Joe or? Um. Yeah, I've been buying a bunch of that stuff because it seems to be coming around a little bit more. Um. The G- uh, I've been buying some of the um. What is it? The Classified series and the. The new like Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes stuff that they, that you're seeing like in Target and stuff. I've been buying little bits and pieces here and there of that. Okay. And Star definitely have the Star Wars set up over here too. Um our our thing for Star Wars is Ad Ads Millennium Falcons. That's what we collect. So. I think we need to make some prints of some screen grabs and invite you out to a show one day and just have you sign some autographs. For people, because it's you, know, you laugh, but it's like you know, it it is a treat to meet someone who got to do what every other kid our our age wanted to do. You you got to be in a commercial, you got free toys for it, and you got a mm-hmm. hell of a story to tell thirty years later. Yeah, yeah, I was uh, the the, the um, toy con that I was at where I bought that um that um the run amok that I have. There was a guy there that, you know, he, he suggested that, that I start going to toy con and I thought it was kind of ridiculous, but I mean, you know, now I'm hearing basically something similar a second time. It's like, you know, I'd do it. Like, like you said, it's, you know, it, it's an awesome experience to be able to do that. You know, it's, it's just like being on this, on this podcast, you know, who knew somebody wanted to do a podcast for the commercials that I did. You know, at first when Peter sent me that message, I almost ignored it because you get so much, spam. you get so much spam and, and um, uh, scam type stuff, you know, sent to you all the time. But he he'd given enough enough information that I was like, yeah, I'll bite. And so you know, and then then you know, it was like my, our mothers work together. I have your transformers, um, you know, as if he was holding them hostage from me or something like that. <laughs> but uh, I think you should probably uh, send them back. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> i think it's the season of giving and you should probably send them back peter i'd have to dig them out there's somewhere around here yeah yeah that metroplex man that is a nice one oh, you've it's got safe. his metroplex shame on oh, you peter well, peter for... just moved too uh not too long ago so it he's got a fair amount of boxes uh and, and whatnot uh, but yeah, no, uh, Transformers, best toy line ever. A lot of staying power, lasted, you know, yeah. Our parents were probably playing with like little like guys on a, on like sticks, marionettes and stuff. You know, it's really cool for me. And I'm, uh, I don't know if you guys have kids or not, but, you know, kids are playing with the same toys I played with. Even, I- even my daughter, do- both of my daughters have played with Transformers at some point. I've got then, uh I've got two kids that I know of, uh, both girls, and uh, uh, they used to use Castle Grayskull as Rapunzel's tower, and then Rapunzel would throw her hair down, 
And then I gave him a beat up old Thunder Tank and Flynn Rider, no lie, Flynn Rider would pull up in the Thunder Tank to Castle Grayskull to get Rapunzel. <laughs> That's pretty that, cool. That is one of the best memories I, I have of my kids playing with toys. And then my eldest, she's 10 now. She played with like, she had Skeletor, He-Man, and Battle Cat. And she would play with those guys. I know, both my girls. So my, my, my oldest girl is my oldest child. And, you know, she's way past that at this point. But my, uh, my oldest um, child with my wife is, is my daughter with her, or my current wife. Um, and she's seven and she still plays with that stuff. I recently got her, um, air razor, uh, a couple months ago. You know, she was pretty excited about that. So. But, Have um, you guys been watching the cyberverse cartoon together? Uh, my son and I watch those. You talking about the ones on Netflix? The new one on, yeah, yeah. on Netflix and YouTube. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, my 15 year old and I, we've watched those together. Those were pretty cool. I really like those. And so, and you know, every time a, a new cartoon series comes out, they always have Soundwave in there, which is my favorite Transformer. So it's always an opportunity to get a new Soundwave. So, did you remember asking any questions of anyone there, like, "Hey, why did Optimus die in the movie?" Or, "Can do you have any other toys?" Or, uh, so we filmed this in '85. The movie didn't come out till '86. Okay. Oh yeah, but now, um, no, I think I was just more curious about the process. I I have some pictures actually here that I, um of of the filming um and um there's one of me talking about, like this can, magnifying on. Can and, you send us those pictures if it's okay with you, and we could share them as sure. we're talking during the podcast? That that is a mind blowing thing. To I mean, I have got pictures of them. So I can send those. If you want the physical pictures, I can do that. Yeah, actually, send the physical pictures to me. <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. No, no the, digital, the copies digital, are ones, fine. Uh... digital copies are fine. It, it's it's just mind blowing to like learn behind the scenes stuff of of right. just a commercial. Like, um, I got to talk to a kid who he, he's you know he's an adult now. He was the he was pictured on the front of uh, the trailbreaker power cycle and just yeah. hearing the whole process of that he you know what he went through to with the photographer and they dressed him and they they paid him for the pants and the shoes that his mom bought for him to wear to that oh, yeah. day and uh, yeah I, and uh you, you never think that you know 30 years later people want to hear those stories and we this is how much people love this brand. It's it, you're right. It does have staying power, and mm. people may think, oh, it's you know your your wife or mom or kids may think it's inconsequential, but to us grown men, it's <laughs> it's interesting and it's exciting to to learn something new about about this brand that we love. So thank yeah. you for sharing your story with us. Yeah, no problem. I I really appreciate you guys asking me to, to share it with you. It's like I said, it's, you know, it, it's really cool. Just, you know, not from a, Hey, I was in commercials, you know, you guys should want to know my story. It's just really cool for someone to say, Hey man, were you in these commercials? And like, yeah, I was. Say, hey, we'd love to hear your story. That That's really neat. You know? And I thank you guys for that. You know, I, even I, if it's four of us having this conversation and no one ever saw this, it would be, just really cool to just sit here and, you know, discuss it with people who I don't, you know, don't know in real life. You know, does it make sense? Hey, if you're yeah. going to be in the Los Angeles area in March, let me know. We'll get you set up at the convention. Um, I, I, yeah, I just uh... <laughs> my text. He's trying to tell me what to say to you guys. <laughs> um. It, it's amazing. It's amazing to hear this behind the scenes stuff. I, I'm dying to see those pictures. I can, uh, I can show now. I mean, I can show them to you. And then ab them absolutely. You. Absolutely. I, I, that would be amazing. Somewhere else, but I just don't. I, these are the ones that I found. And they're kind of blurry. But here's the one with the guy with the little. Um, it's going to be hard for me to tell if you can see this. See, the guy has like the little. 
binocular headset thing, uh-huh. magnifying glass. And that's me in the uh, little yellow sweatshirt. These are pictures of the actual set filming. Yeah, uh, it looks like there's a glare on that. I can't tell if you can see that. Yeah, there's a little bit of a glare. Is that better? Well, if you send if you send us digital say, copies, if you want to send the digitals, well, we can uh, put them up on the. I think if you move it back a little from the camera, we'll we'll be able to see it. Yeah, there you go. That's a little better. Yeah. That is great. So, who took these pictures? I'm um, I'm guessing. So, my brother, um, I think my brother went with me twice. I don't, and then my mother went with me the last time. So, probably and one of them. Your brother standing there like that son of a bitch. God damn it. Uh, no, my He's just taking pictures and. We're six years old. Um. In difference in, uh, in age, he's six years older than me, so he kind of just missed that, you know, that um, by the time Transformers came out and got big, he was he was in high school and you know, just wanted to hang out with his friends, party and and play sports and stuff. So I don't I don't think that maybe maybe he was a little bit jealous about, you know, not being, <laughs> but I don't think he cared about Transformers. Wow. Um, Peter, Lucas, do you have any other questions for for Chris? What 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 are we missing? I'm trying to think. I mean, was there, there anything like, you know, that you didn't mention as far as like the process on the on the set? Was there anything you didn't like? The the director? I thought he was a jerk. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he probably wasn't, you know, it's kid's perception. Um, he's just doing a job and, you know, it's probably frustrating for him to, you know, trying to work with 10 year old kids who probably had ADD and ADHD, you know, and, and too focused on the fact that they're in front of a camera and that they've got these cool toys in their hands and they're going to be on TV to, to really like take direction the way that we should have. But, um, I just recall him, um, just, just wasn't. Was it a huge fan? Um, didn't like being hot and doing almost thirty takes of um, of a toy I really couldn't control once I let go of it. Um, but overall, no. I mean, it, and I don't mean to make it sound like I'm complaining or like I didn't like the the, the whole like experience. I definitely did. I definitely had a lot of fun. It was it was more fun than not. But you know, it wasn't all fun. Um, but it's like, I think we both said, uh, just to say it again, you know, it's it's something most people can't say that they've done. So I'm I've thinking done. right now, uh, my wheels are turning. How old is your youngest child? Um, five months old. Okay. So yeah. your second youngest child? Four years old. Okay. So your other, you said you had like six or 10 kids. So, so, so somewhere I'm... in there, there's got to be a kid. We have to do some kind of online petition to get your mm-hmm. kid in a Transformers commercial. Hey, do they still so have commercials, if, Rick? I, I don't know. Well, so, all right. So, you know, my background is I used to work at Hasbro. Right. So I remember there was a small studio uh, downstairs, and they would film commercials right there in Rhode Island. And they would they would be like a cast call to, like, um, employees kids hey we're looking for a kid this age boy girl this height whatever bring them down we'll audition to them so a lot of the times I would say in the last 10 10 15 years when you see a kid in a Transformers commercial that's an employee's kid oh, so cool. it's it's definitely changed since uh, you know the wild west of the 1980s and no child safety laws. And they got you under huge heat lamps and, you know, and other countries would, taking direction from people that, you know, I would love to have my kids in transformers commercials. I mean, we, there we go. We would, should start like a change.com petition. Awesome to bring that, you know, full circle. And, and like I said, every single one of them, um, well, with the exception of maybe my five month old and, um, 
has has played with them. My daughter, the first toy I ever bought my daughter before she was even born, uh, and and I knew she was a girl, um, was a um, Soundwave, the little one that was uh, the drone version of Soundwave, and uh, it's it's in this house somewhere, and I still have to find it so I can put it up there with my uh, collection. Uh, <laughs> I know I can't remember specifically with my oldest daughter, but I know I used to buy her stuff like that for Christmas all the time, and, and just you know. Or what is your prized Transformers possession right now? Uh, it's kind of hard to say. Um, I, I have this. I mean, I can show you some of the stuff if you want to see it. It's right what, back what's your favorite, favorite thing in your collection? Um, I don't have this, maybe this Trypticon just because it's, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I don't know if it's rare, but I mean, I don't know anybody who else who has it. Um, I also have a um, a uh, Cybertron Transformer. That's pretty cool. A giant Optimus Prime. Oh, actually, probably my um, it was my son's until he gave it back because he he outgrew the toys. Yeah, um, G- gave I have it the, back. Yeah, I have the gear of the gear of the horse. Horse with the gold. Uh. uh Starscream, and he's like, okay, he's like this. Oh, the, the giant one, yeah. Yes, yes. I'll, I'll show you guys. What, what, what the Cy- Cybertron that was a, Starscream? That wasn't. Was that Year of the Horse? Can you see? It? I don't know. I can't year, see what you guys. Go, can. Year of the Snake. I think it was Year. Can of you the see horse. that? Yeah. A, yep. Trypticon, yeah. Cybertron, uh, Beast Machines, Optimus Primal. Mm-hmm. The Platinum Series one. Yeah. Yeah. Year of the Monkey. It does a little, like, tribal music. Rick actually worked so, on some of those releases. I uh, did. So, I worked on that Starscream. Yeah, I love that thing. Um, when when you asked me what's my favorite one, I, I don't know why I didn't think of that immediately. Um, I mean, I tell, I'll tell you what, Chris. Um so my my current what I do now is I, I have a frame shop and uh, I, I have an art gallery. So if you want me to frame those pictures for you at, at no cost, you can send me those pictures of you and I'm okay. happy to frame them in something nice for you. That, that's really cool. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds really neat. And then I'll uh, mass produce them and sign autographs. There you go. I mean, it sounds funny, but it's, you know, it's it's one of those things that it, there's no harm in going to a show one day with some prints. And people, I bet you, you will be surprised at how many people come up to you and say, I remember that commercial. I would or, do it. I, w- I would absolutely do it. I think it would be a really neat experience. And it would be, you know, more for me. I, I mean, well, you got to bring your kids to show yeah. off. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, I'll sign the kids and give them away. <laughs> <laughs> we can, we can probably do a raffle for the kids. <laughs> That'll work. So, Peter, but, how did you end up with uh, with Chris's toys? Okay, what so there? let's connect some dots. Funny story. So, Chris, you filmed the commercials in 1985 in the Netherlands, in Amsterdam. And 1987, my family moved from our first house in Alaska to our second house in Alaska. And I was, I was in, you know, I had a bunch of Transformers, but I was starting to, like, fall more into the G.I. Joe stage of things. And then one day I came home and mom had this box full of Transformers like transformers i didn't have yet and i was like whoa what 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 is happening here and she's like oh uh, i don't want to you know say your mom's name on the thing but you know we we you know she talked about your mom they work together and this is like late 87 early 88 and uh she's like oh her son is no longer into these and 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 so i got these for you and i was like oh okay and then i was back on transformers you know and didn't deviate much more ever again um so that's in Alaska, you know. So the the your 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 toys, and you were only in Alaska for a year. Yeah, 
Yep, here. So when, you know, the, the ebbs and flows of collecting, it just is a thing that happens. My mom and I, we were just talking about that uh, a couple of years ago. And, and she also mentioned when she gave me the box that, oh, and he was in the commercials. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, I'm seven. I'm like, that's that's neat. Check out this box of toys, you know. Um, and then years later, she remi- we were talking about that. And I was like, remember that box that you got? And she's like, oh, yeah. And, and you know, my, my coworker's son was in the commercials. And I was like, you you did say that before, huh? And I and I you know I knew your mom's name, so I Facebook stalked you and sent the message, and uh, here we are. Yeah. But, you know what? I I'm more interested in doing a show with Peter now about how you went from Alaska to Florida, like that. Oh, there's that been lots of is, steps in between that. There were there yeah, were a lot yeah, of like, yeah, that's a lot of zigging and zagging. That, that to me is like I thought I had it interesting going from like continent to continent, but going from like the cold to like the humid sweltering heat of Florida. It's a swamp you down know? here. It definitely gets cold up there, but it's not, you know, in my year there, I found that it's not, I, I think people have a perception of Alaska and then there's the reality of Alaska. It definitely gets warm up there. People don't realize that it, you know, it's not all igloos and snow and ice and stuff like, like people think. like warm, like 70 degrees or like, like 80. Yeah. I mean, they, so yes, probably. Um, I think sometimes, like you know, you'll get flukes where it gets even warmer than that. I think I read one time the record high was 90 degrees up there, but you know, 70 degrees up there is shorts and and no t-shirt weather for for those guys. You know, um, so uh, I really enjoyed it. I never I never went back up there while I was in the army. Um, it would have been cool, but. I don't know how cool it would be to, to live there when you're in the army rather than being a kid, you know, being out in the field, I would imagine wouldn't be as much fun yeah. as just playing. And it's a great place. I really love being there and, and not to get too off topic, but, um, it, you know, you're probably going to go up there for somewhere between two to four years, probably more likely three or four. And I, I think you can get the experience in a year or two, you know, I don't, um, I'm looking to have the Alaska experience and like a cruise <laughs> and like, like a two or three day cruise and call it, call it a day. Yeah. You can't get that experience. Cause you know, when I first moved up there again, not to get too, too far off topic, but the first day we were there, my mom moved up there a month before we did. So we went to one of her coworkers houses and uh, we're outside throwing a Frisbee around with her daughters. It's me and my brother. Um, and they had to tell us to be quiet. You know, hey, man, you, you got to be quiet. It was one o'clock in the morning and it was broad daylight outside, literally. And it stayed like that probably for at least I feel like it was the first couple of months. But it was probably more like the first couple of weeks I was there. I was literally walking to the corner store at three o'clock in the morning in broad daylight. Now, the winter, the, at least the year I was there, there was never a, a day where it was complete and total darkness. There was always at least one or two hours of daylight, but. You're going to school in total darkness. You're coming home in total darkness. Sorry, again, like I didn't mean to get off topic. But... It's all good. We're just connecting these dots. And... Yep. Right. No, that's interesting. I, I had no idea that uh, Chris was the one potentially responsible for Peter being into Transformers. So th- there you, we go. You, Mind definitely. blown. Yeah. You definitely cost... relit a fire. Chris, your mother has cost Peter thousands of dollars <laughs> i'll let her know that I'll tell and her. several marriages <laughs> I, I, i'm not sure if it was uh completely because of transformers but you know <laughs> well they said it's the toys or me <laughs> i mean if, if my wife said that's the toys. toys or me i'd be like i'll see you later the toys toys don't fight me i would do <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I love my wife. <laughs> um, yeah, I love my wife too. <laughs> a great toy. Yeah, I think you know. I I think we're getting to a point where it's like um, it, it, men are buying these things on a regular. You know, it's 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 becoming a more regular thing. It's um, it's not necessarily to play with them, but just it's a piece of of our history and, and it's just nostalgic for us. And like I said, it's really awesome to me that my kids are playing with the same toys I was playing with. I didn't play with the same toys my dad played with, you know? Right. And 
Well, well, that's what, like, you know, I think that some of our parents and people that were, uh, you know, older than us, they might have been into matchbox cars or, you know, whatever it may be. And so then, you know, maybe they have a hot rod or whatnot. But, uh, you know, for us, just the time mm. period growing up, a lot of it is those, you know, uh, you know, toys and, you know, Transformers and whatever, He-Man, whatever you may have been into at the time. Yeah, culturally, there was like that just big surge of properties and starting in the late 70s and just pushing on through and uh, Transformers, G.I. Joe, uh, He-Man, like we've mentioned, in Humanoids, Ninja Turtles and, and on. So uh, it changed it changed the landscape. completely. So, no, yeah. so I like all of that stuff. I got to have a whole Skeletor set up. Um, He-Man was probably the least of the ones that I played with back then, but I still really like it. It was a great, great series, great storyline, great cartoon. Um, love Ed Joe, love Star Wars, you know. Uh, you mentioned Matchbox cars and Hot Wheels. Love that stuff. And, but we're we're you know, very fortunate that we grew up when we did, uh, I think, without electronics. Um, and we're very fortunate that we grew up where we grew up because we had the ability to play with different toys um, and not have the constant you know, this is all I see out of my daughters, you know, yep. and it, it drives me crazy. My, my 10 year old, all she does is, you know, swipe, right, swipe, right, swipe, left. <laughs> no, you're kids right. These days, I tell you what. And, and um, I'm sure our kids are saying the same thing about their kids when the next new uh, <laughs> technological um, surge or advance comes along. But, uh, you know, uh, just going outside and playing and, you know, I, I remember running around with, you know, X wing in our hands, you know, or <sighs> posing an ad at, you know, or the tra- with your Transformers, Starscream, and stuff like that. Man, I I had so much fun as a kid la- landing my, I had my cousins hand me down for Star Wars, so I would land the Millennium Falcon on top of the ad at, and the <laughs> the ad at was like the like the house, and the Falcon was the car, and they would land the Falcon on the ad at. And then putting Yoda's little hut on top of the Ewok village and then going going <laughs> through the the little sand trap to the Ewok village. Yeah. But you're right. I mean my my uh, my fifteen year old is his relationship with his friends is through this. And they're cool with that. And that's I mean, you know and that's it, cool with hey, as long as you've got friendship, that's cool, but you you're missing out. They're they're missing out on, you know. And and COVID's changed things as well. Um and it's crazy to think that kids can play video games with other kids online. I remember we we knew where everyone was because the bikes were outside. Mm. And I remember playing with Robbie down the street and we were playing with Devastator in the backyard because <laughs> he had three guys and I had three guys. And when our powers united, we had Devastator. I think I had some of those. Peter, do you have any of those? Do you have? But there was I a set though right no it was a mix master and scavenger yeah but uh yeah devastator was a really cool one and i think the first time i ever saw any of those may have been during um the commercials i think i think some of the the trading cards were of the constructicons and that may have been my first introduction to those because i think those were relatively new at that time too yeah um but yeah, it wasn't bad. I mean, my son and I, my 15, 15 year old, from the time he was three and a half, um, first time I came home from Iraq, you were playing um, the the newest Halo would come out the day I'd got, gotten home, and I pre ordered it on Amazon, so it was waiting for me. And we grew up playing that, so he's going to look back and he's going to have that, and that's going to be his memory. And his kids will have something completely different than video games. But I still think you know, and he, and you know, he did play with the Transformers, so it's not not like, but not not like you're describing, not the way that we did. Not yeah. going out. It's a nice. It's, and... it's nice that you get to share that with your kids. Like I remember the day my dad got back from deployment, we went online to start shooting people. It's great. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> on a serious note, Chris, thank you for your service to our country. Uh, no thank you. You're a much braver man than I am. Uh, well, it wasn't always easy. Let me just tell you. Oh, but but uh, no, I appreciate it. I I appreciate you know. Your um, 
gratitude. It's always, it's, and, I, and don't take this the wrong way. You know, people would say that to you in a grocery store when I mean, you're, you know, buying milk on the way home in your uniform. What do you say to people when they say that to you? You know, do you got but, five? You got, you got a 10 on you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back, you know, because it is, it's, it's, they appreciate it, you know. So is it, I mean, I mean, this is very off topic, but is it, is it not appropriate then to, no. to, it's 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 absolutely appropriate, but it's just kind of like you know, um, I guess when when it first started happening, after a while it was just kind of commonplace. But uh, you know, it's it, to me it's like if I went up to the cashier in the grocery store and said, "Hey, thanks for being a cashier," you know what I'm saying? It's just my job. You know, I I appreciate that you appreciate, <laughs> but it's just kind of like it's well, kind of off guard, you know, at, at least at first. <laughs> Being a so cashier good. and being in the armed services, I guess both have the risk of getting shot. But <laughs> yeah, I guess. But yeah. And well, yeah. I think with uh, with that, we should probably bring things to a close. Um, amazing experience talking to you, Chris. Thanks. Uh, fa- very fascinating. You guys too. Yeah, no, right. it was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you for doing this. Yeah. If you want those framed, contact me. I'm happy to frame them for you. Sure. I appreciate it. Yeah, um, and if you it, want to send the, the pictures as well, and we'll go ahead and, and get them added to the um uh to the show, kinda edited in. Okay. And whatnot. So Yeah. Um, uh do you have any parting words for for us, Chris? I uh, just like, you know, thanks thanks peter thanks for you know thanks for remembering that thanks for you know seeking me out um i it it's just like i said it's being on a podcast is almost just as cool as doing the commercials you know for someone to be interested enough even if it's just enough to want to talk to me about it that's just really cool to me you know what i'm saying hopefully 30 years from now someone will be like hey were you on that podcast one time can you (laughs) Can you come talk to us about? I can't believe all the guys on that podcast killed those guys. Like, I, <laughs> like I can't believe they murdered all those people. What? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about there, Rick. But okay, we haven't got that's in the future. We haven't got there yet. Uh, oh, uh, okay. Well, well. Anyway, so but yeah, thank thank you again uh, for being on and um, yeah, um, thanks again. Um, I don't know. Does anyone else have any? Yeah. Just, sure. Hey, right. uh, pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Yep. Uh, I'm glad we were able to do this. And thank you for being available. Thank you for 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 being receptive. And uh, thank you for what you've done for un- unknowingly done for me. Because yeah, you you, <laughs> what, you, relit, you what relit a fire. To you. Oh, it's it's yeah. This has been uh, this has been really really great. Thank you. Yeah, Chris. If you I only not- knew how messed up. Peter's life is because of Transformers. Well, I mean, you know what I think is also cool? I think it's really cool that he still has them. You know, I let him go. He kept he he held on to them, and I think that's pretty cool. You know, whether I ever see those things ever again in person or not, it, it's really cool to know where they are. You know, they're, and then they're, they're safe. <laughs> and I think that that's really neat. You know, um, and thanks for taking care of them. You know, but um, yeah, I appreciate it. I really appreciate being on on the podcast. Uh, like I said, I think it's 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 great, and thanks thanks for being interested enough to have me. You know. Yep. All right. Well, um, thank you, and we will see everyone next week or next year. Next year, yeah, depending on next when this year. airs. Yes.